It's October 1st. That means the Medicare annual election period starts today. I know all the details of Part D as well as Medicare Advantage plans around the nation. You'll get my preview coming up next. All right, everybody, it's October 1st. That makes today the actual first day that I can discuss anything about the new changes, new changes. How are they in different, the old changes, uh, the changes to Medicare, Part D, Medicare Advantage going into 2021. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now, you want to get on my pet peeve list. This is the Medicare annual election period. Do not refer to it as anything different. It's not open enrollment. There's nothing open about it. Nevertheless, the first see me after class goes right to medicare.gov. Open enrollment starts October. It's not open. It isn't. Anyway. All right. During this period, what can you do? Number one, you can change Part D plans freely, okay? Why would you do this? Because your overall total cost will decline. You can find a better plan. It is going to be more and more likely. We're going to get into that in a few moments. Number two, you can change among Medicare Advantage plans freely. You can change to any Medicare Advantage plan that is offered in your the zip code of your residence, period. Okay. You can do number one or number two as many times as you want between October 15th through December 7th. There's nothing anyone can say or do about it. Now, I don't recommend you doing that. And the reason is because you'll be caught in a blizzard of red tape. Okay. So I don't recommend doing that. That's, that's not financial advice, that's operational advice, okay? Practical, common sense advice. Because what happens is the carriers are gonna start sending you their materials, and then you're gonna cancel, and then they're gonna send you the cancellation letter, and then they're gonna send you the new materials to the new carrier, and guess what? You're not gonna be able to keep track because these are all gonna be arriving on different dates from one another. It'll be, it would not be fun, okay? But, does the right exist for you to change freely either Part D or Medicare Advantage plans? The answer is yes. There is a third and it needs to be handled carefully, okay? The third change you can make is if you are living in a state where you don't have other extra rights to get Medigap acceptance, this is the period that you can change from Medicare Advantage to Medicare. Now, that said, if you don't have guaranteed issue or guaranteed acceptance, which are subtly different from each other, you would have to pass medical underwriting. This is why you need to start with the Medigap application. Okay? So, I've got, a I got another video called Medicare versus Medicare Advantage. There are reasons that you'd want to do this for some people. Okay, that, that part of, let's just leave that for a different topic. That's a topic of a different video. Took me more than an hour, you know, to create that video. You've already decided to, to go to Medigap, fine. If that's the case, you need to start with Medigap. The reason is I, you need to know whether you're accepted or not. First, you cannot simply switch over to Medigap, okay, by canceling stuff first. That's not a good idea. Why? Because if your Medigap application is denied, then you will not have extra coverage for health and prescription, okay? 
that is the outcome I'm trying to prevent. That's the outcome I'm trying to prevent. So that's why the order is important. That's why I've slowed down. You need to get Medigap acceptance first. Then you choose a Part D plan, which will automatically eject the incumbent Medicare Advantage plan. Everybody got that? Medigap first, get your acceptance, then select a Part D plan. That's it for, the, for this section. Okay, for this segment, and before I get started, I get, you know, I spoke in front of um, a group in Oklahoma today, and I told them that what I'm going to tell you. You can send me an email to AEP2021 at gh2benefits.com and get my free private Medicare consultations. You would have to tell me something so impossibly difficult that I would charge you then I would always tell you in advance, which could, you could always refuse, in which case it's fine. But the free services there, you have to send me an email to that address. It's there in the video. I never know which side. Uh, anyway, it's in the text below the video. Okay, now we're into the guts here. And up on the screen, you can see medicare.gov. And as I said, it's not open enrollment because you can't just roll up and enroll in Part B if you're late. It's not open. I, I don't get understand it. It leaves people the wrong impression. It's awful. Okay, well, we're back on the tangent of the, the see me after class. Anyway, let's get back to track. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a number of medications that are fairly typical in the world. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I actually do and point out to you how complicated it actually is. The reality is, you know, in my book, where's my book? So here's my book. In the book, what I'm detailing here is rules of what you can do. I talk about financial implications, okay, about the stuff that you would choose. And I'm not really trying to regurgitate you know, Medicare and you, that, that'd be pointless. That'd be, I, I got better stuff to do. And so do you. The issue with the advertisements and the commercials, the mail that you receive, they're not wrong per se. They're not wrong. The point is, is it doesn't provide you with the edge, the information needed to make a decision. And this is the critical part. And what I'm going to try to do to show you show you here on just some, and this is just going to be scratching the surface. This is not your situation. This is not going to be your location. And I'm just going to use a single one, which is smack dab or you know, pretty much in the middle of the country. They like to think so, I'm sure. But we're going to use Chicago, Illinois. So what I'm going to do, and my point here is, is this is the exercise about how I could look at a particular person's situation. So this is medicare.gov and I'll just speed right along. And we're going to start with part D, standalone prescription plans. There it is. Now, this isn't exactly right because it says need a 2020 plan, it doesn't say 2021. It's fine, We'll it, it'll corrects itself here. So here we go, preview 2021 Medicare plans. Now I choose continue without logging in because I don't create, I'm not a Medicare person. You know, I'm not a beneficiary. So as a result, I don't have an account. So create with logging in and let's just choose part D. And this says, we're gonna be showing you 2020 plans. Okay, and that's gonna be very instructive for us. So here we go. And I'm just gonna, this is Cook County, Chicago, Illinois, there you are. You can see it there on your screen, Cook County. And I'm gonna put, I don't have any help. So this is for persons who don't get any financial assistance towards prescription drug benefits. If you do receive extra help, you need to press the right bubble here because your results will vary wildly, okay? Your premiums will be different. Your co-pays will be different. The, you know, the entire set of plans in order is going to look different. So be sure to choose correctly here. That's important. Let's go next. Do you want to see your drug costs? Yes, that's the point of this exercise. 
how do you normally fill your prescriptions? I always choose both. And the reason is because I want the option to be able to see and compare what mail order prescription delivery costs look like compared to going to the pharmacy. Got some, here's a hint. Mail order doesn't necessarily always mean cheaper. Okay, here we go. Next. So I've made up, you know, a bunch of medications and I'm going to actually have to look up one of the medications because I forgot it. Right. But uh, let's just see common types of insulin. So sorry about the delay here. Common types of most of common type of insulin. No, let's not use that. Let's use um, no longer. Uh, what types of insulin is safe for insulin? What kind of insulin can you make? Let's. OK, so. I'm going to use no, Nova Log. Uh, I'm going to use Human Log. Okay, so here we go. We're going to use Human Log. This is a type of insulin, widely known, widely known, widely used. And there's the generic version. We're going to use the generic. If there's a generic available, use it. No, by what I mean is if you are being prescribed the generic, it's important to use the generic name. Do not. Do not put the brand name in there if you're actually taking the generic. Important point. So let's just say this, and I'm making this up. That's not going to be the determination here. So we're going to, so we've added insulin. We're going to find another drug. Let's take a cheap one by the Cinepril, tier one drug, one of the most inexpensive you can find on the market for anything. Let's continue on some more. Now, let's just add a couple of, you know, ones that people don't know so much about or people get have trouble with. Restasis. These are eye drops. People with red eye, you can see my, you know, bloodshot eyes largely due to a lack of sleep. Uh, here it is here. Add this to the drug list. Let's add a couple of more. Um, nope. I, I need to keep adding. Okay, albuterol, COPD inhalers. You want to add this, you'll see why. For persons with COPD, asthma, they have inhalers. This is a common medication. Okay, so that pretty much is okay. I'll just add one more just for kicks. Levothyroxine sodium. People with hypothyroidism. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even sure exactly what that is. I guess your glands are screwed up or underactive or oh, hypo hyper. I'm not, can't remember which one's which. This is the general type of dosage, 88 or 100. You know, that's my memory working. So now these are our five medications. There we go, right? Albuterol, insulin, levothyroxine, lisinopril, restasis. Add done adding drugs. We choose pharmacies. So it's Chicago, so that means Osco. You know, that's kind of like the one in Chicago land people know about. So we'll let's add some more. Walgreens. I don't get me wrong. I'm totally I, I don't know what the answers are here. Uh, these are random. These are just, you know, names that that apply to more places in the country. So there I've done it for Walgreens. And let's just add CVS here. So you can see at the bottom here that they show up. Osco, Walgreens, CVS, mail order, and we say done. So loading, loading, loading. And now it shows the there are, it shows you the 31 drug plants. Now What's happening here? These plans are presented in from lowest total cost to you to highest. There are 31 plans in Cook County. Your county can be different. That's why your zip code is important. Okay. Most of the time, this is state by state. Most of the time. Not all the time. You need to know the zip code. You can see here, the, and again, I don't, I didn't know what the answer was going to be. These five, this is the first time I'm running this. And here's the list. And you can see the, this is the annual 
estimate cost. Okay. And you can see that here's the monthly premium. Okay. And you can see this particular plan has zero dollar deductible. Now, the deductible in 2021 can be as much as $445. Other plans have lower premiums, so it can be from zero to 445. Now, and you can see here the difference already. 3924. $3,924.80 for this plan. The next, the second most pop most the second place plan in terms of overall cost, right? It's right here. Guess what? $775 more expensive. Same list, nothing's changed. Very instructive here. Same carrier, different plan within the same carrier. They're the top two in this particular instance on this random sample of medications. And you can see that the overall cost varies $775. Now, this is not a typical list, right? Because the person has insulin. Very important tip here. The reality is I, I created this a new version of this video today because 24 hours ago, I tried to make this video. This wasn't available. It's now available now. Thank, thank someone for having made this correction. <clears throat> Let's take a look. This year, we have insulin savings. Some plans cap insulin at $35 a month copay. If you are an insulin person, you must click here. Must. Okay. We apply filters. Let's see what happens. Now, guess what? In order to get these savings, there are no longer 31 plans. There are nine. Not every plan gives you this insulin savings. Guess what? It didn't change the order here. The number one plan is still the same top plan. Now it changes the second one where you can see it. Now look at the price difference from $39.24 to $13,581, $10,000 difference. $10,000 difference a year. Okay. So, you know, people tell me, well, I'm just going to do this myself and I'm just going to bang it in and click and I'm just going to, you know, hit the enroll, stuff like this. You, you need to have this done by an expert to be candid with you. And look, some of you are never, some of you are not going to send me an email. I get it. I got a friend. I've got a volunteer. They always do it for me, et cetera, et cetera. If someone's wrong here, this is $10,000 difference, year difference estimated. $10,000 a year. Okay. Do I, do I really need to give you any more evidence? Anyway, I want to show you a couple of extra things here. I want to show you, this is the list for 2021, right? That's the list of nine in a row. Okay. It's not important who they are. To be candid with you, it doesn't, you know, I'm affiliated with all the plans. It doesn't matter. Let's take a look at 2020. If that same, and you can see it, whoops, the, no, there's no insulin savings. And you can see what has happened here. Something looks off. Using the same medications, the issue here, you can see this is a problem, right? And how difficult it can be. You can't just click over here because this number looks like, ooh, this is, a, th this is the best plan. And it is actually the same plan as 2021. This number here is only showing you through the end of the year. 
not throughout the year. So you can see it. You can just round up. See, this is five hundred dollars. So that's two fifty a month. If you multiply that by twelve, you get three thousand dollars. Look what else. These are the top two, top three, and now you can see how much. This is a thousand dollars a month, right? Eleven hundred dollars a month. The difference here amongst plans is still enormous. Be careful. Be careful. Now, let's wrap it up here. So that's your part D. Okay. That's kind of how I look at it. Are there more subtle points that I don't have time and you don't have the patience to review? The answer is going to be yes. There are going to be a lot of them. And, and I'm just going to click here because I go through here to plan details. And when I go through plan details, what gets revealed is that these costs, preferred generic for your preferred retail for one month will be certain prices. And as soon as you go to another retail pharmacy, you can see what was five is now $15, right? You can see if I change it to preferred, it was $5 to a standard retail pharmacy. It's $15 per medication. Okay. Can't tell you enough. You need to be careful. You need to get in these correct pharmacies. And then you can see these pharmacies out of those pharmacies. Standard. Here's the one that costs 15. Here's the one that costs 15. This one costs five. So yes, the plans are going to take your card. The costs you incur can be different. It's not only that. That's also true for every single medication. You can see it right here. Let's just, just, just check this out. You can see it. Inhaler, after the deductible, $74.27. There is no deductible on this plan, so that's your out-of-pocket cost, okay? At the preferred, still $74.2017, only 10 cents lower. But on other medications, much different. Levothyroxine, for example, $12.57 here. $5. It just goes to show you what a tangled web prescription coverage benefits, getting the most for your dollar and choosing the right plan. Pretty tricky stuff. <laughs> so, so after that video editing fiasco, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two parts. This is part one, which is standalone prescription plan. The next part which I'm going to release pretty much on top of this one as soon as I can press send and all the whatever stuff that has to be done. We're going to have Medicare Advantage comparisons. If you want to send me an email, aep2021 at gh2benefits.com. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and press the like button. Really helps the channel out. Appreciate the time today. I'm Jay. This has been the Maximizer Medicare Weekly, a very special edition in front of the Medicare annual election period. Speak with you next time.